name's Keith Norris. I've been an artist for just over 60 years and I've been a tutor for just over 40 years. And today I'm going to demonstrate with Atelier Interactive paints. They're an artist quality acrylic and they put out a very useful uh, spray bottle. So because I'm going to work wet in wet, I'm going to thoroughly wet my canvas. This is an ordinary canvas you'd purchase from an art store. It's factory primed. Now I haven't put any gesso on it, additional gesso. And we'll just see how this paint adheres to this relatively rough surface. And I'm going to spray my paints to make those pretty viscous so they run freely. Now this is a beautiful blue cobalt, nice and Now I thought we'd do some flowers, but not a representational painting of flowers, something pretty, something attractive, something fairly free, something easy to paint without the confinements of good drawing. Gee, that ultra strong. And some magenta. I'm using all high frequency colours here. Adding plenty of water. I'm just getting the run effect. Working wet in wet. Got a nice, very nice broad brush here, inch and a half, which means I can cover quickly. Generally, with this sort of um, painting, I would paint in the flat and then tip the canvas up and let it run down. But as I'm demonstrating, I'm unable to do that. So we'll have some interesting results. Good, I hope. Never be frightened about producing a bad painting. Just have fun. Now, because I have colours all in a similar frequency, it doesn't matter if I hit one or the other. I'm not going to be out a great deal. That's enough. The opening time of this paint is considerable. It's a couple of hours at least. So the addition of water will be interesting to see how fast it dries. Beautiful brush, you flat or fine. Okay. Now before my next stage of painting, I'm going to have to let this dry. So I'd say it's time for a cup of tea. Right, well we've had our coffee and it's dried beautifully. I'm now going to just add a little. There's some beautiful graduations here that I'm happy with, but I'm just going to let some dribbles of water run down like that. And then I'm going to add some solid colour. And that colour should follow the dribbles. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. I'm going to load that up. So the paint is actually following the runs and giving me a linear effect which I'm after. I like it. And you can actually draw with water if you want the paint to follow a certain line. Maybe we have a junction here. The other important thing is I'm getting a two layer wash here. It's translucent. This is sitting on top and the light's going through. You can tip your canvas if you want and make it follow any direction you wish. This is a little boring, so. 
Now let's use a large brush. I'm picking up two colours there. And now we go into the lower frequency colours. Basically having fun. You usually find the best parts are total by accident. And everyone admires that particular piece of work or area. And just take the credit for it. Don't just say it happened by accident. Feel guilty that you haven't put a lot of work into and thought into the structure of that part of the paint. Yeah, I think that's quite pleasing so far. So it's drying time again. One thing I love about this technique, you get lots of tea breaks. Well, I'm now ready. This is dry again. I'm ready to put in something of interest, foreground. And for that, I'm going to go with my warmer colors. I'm going to use a transparent yellow, a pure red, and a brown black, which is unusual, and some white. I usually put out two whites, one white for the warm colors and one for the cool, which stops you tainting your colors. For example, if I've been mixing yellow with the white here, which I'm going to do, and I wish to add a cool color that is tainted with the yellow and I will get a green, which I'm not going to be happy about. And I'm obviously going to have to have more white than that. I'm trying to keep the canvas and the paints quite clean. No drawing. There's no drawing with graphite pencil. I advise against graphite because it's a, a lubricant and the paint doesn't stick to it. It's fatal with oils if you put graphite because uh, we put graphite in our motor oils to make the engine slip. So imagine putting that under your paint service. Graphite also dirties your colour, which is unfortunate. Not a good thing, not a good thing to have. I'm just painting intuitively here. I should have two brushes, one cool, one warm, but I'm just going to We'll have that a little high, I think, and a little cool. I'm going to wet that to make it transparent and flow. So I'm actually taking paint off there. Beautiful brush. And even though I've diluted the paint considerably, it's still covering beautifully. This is not going to be a botanical painting. This is just going to be a essence, capture the essence of what I'm doing. And now a little tight drawing. I'm going to take the blue and add a little black to it, just to somber it a little, and magenta, a lovely mauve there, just to pick up the mauves in the background. The advantage of these paints is that they don't, they don't dry on you quickly, they've built in an extended time it can, you can paint for up to four hours without it going hard. And if you wish, you can re-soften just by spraying with water or adding water so you can blend and change. Now, 